Hi, everybody. <laughs> We're in Santa Barbara at base camp. I am leaving the outside. I'm going somewhere. Goodbye. Damn. It was the first time we met. Yeah, the first time I saw you. It was the first time we met. Yeah, the first time I saw you. Call it what you want. Call it what you want. Polar faded, mine is hazy. Baby, you wavy, you make me crazy. Nana, there's the future. We make it. I love her. So we are first time RV owners, first time full time RVers, and first time off grid. So the learning process the last six months has been interesting and mostly enjoyable. We really weren't sure what to expect, seeing as we've never done any of this before. But so far, it's been a lot of fun. After making the initial decision that we we're going to go full time RV and full-time off-grid RV, that was immediately followed by a whole bunch more questions. Um, after we researched for a while and were able to educate ourselves enough to narrow the questions down, they really came to a few. Maybe the most important being, how much electricity will we use in one day in an RV? That was a mystery question. We had no way to really assess that. And so during the course of the last eight weeks, we've been working that exact problem out and finally have some answers. One of our concerns prior to moving into an RV full time that would be powered by the sun was, what will we have to give up? I mean, that was a pretty big question. We like to watch movies. We have laptop, cell phones. We have electronic devices. We've got all the normal appliances for, you know, modern America. Um, the big question of what will we need to give up? Will we still be able to play Xbox? Will we still be able to watch TV like we want to in the afternoons? Do we need to worry about turning the lights off? Do we need to worry about turning the fan off in the bathroom? Mm -hmm. um, all kind of mystery questions. And it turns out with this particular solar setup, we don't really have to give up much. We found a setup where through workcamping.org where we are off grid. We live in a beautiful park right now. We have hundreds of acres around us in Santa Barbara where honestly to live this way in any other fashion with an ocean view on a bluff overlooking the Pacific, and you need to be a millionaire for that kind of business. So <laughs> this is our version of that, not millionaires, but for us being fully off grid, being able to be here, that alone made the solar system worth it. Other pros and cons of solar, uh, you pay more right at the beginning. You have to buy all the gear. You have to have it installed. It costs money. It's certainly not free. But over if you're going to own the RV for a number of years, it'll average out the cost over the years, and you may see a lower bill than you would if you were in an apartment just paying normal utilities. Um, other benefits, obviously, the cost of the trailer, cost of the solar system, all rolled into one, and that comprises a portion of what replaces our previous rent payments. So let's go ahead and take a look at the solar system. We'll be looking at four main components, the solar panels, the battery bank, the inverter, and the charge controller. Let's go take a look at those. I came up onto the roof of the RV just to show our three 160 watt solar panels right back here. These are the generating potential that replaces all the electricity we use every single day. The normal charge cycle refills our banks to 100%, typically by one or two in the afternoon. Right now with our bank size at 500 amp hours, we're only consuming 20 to 30% of our overall capacity, which is right where we wanna be with the AGM batteries. Behind me to my left is our house battery bank. This is comprised of four six volt, 250 amp hour full river batteries. We opted to go with those because they are AGM chemistry and they take about twice the input charge that a lead acid battery would and they're not nearly as expensive as lithium ion. My preference probably would have been to go lithium ion but it would have been two to three times the price and for our initial foray into getting into the fully off grid this is working out really well and I think the price point at about $1300 for the battery bank sets it a little bit advantageous to lithium right now 
if the prices on lithium come down certainly that chemistry is a little bit stronger it can take a faster charge off the solar and uh, it doesn't have to be topped off to 100% every day. There's a, few, there's a few beneficial aspects of the lithium ion chemistry, but for us right now, this AGM bank is working out fantastically. So when I wired this up, it's wired in series and parallel. RVs are typically on 12 volt systems, typically if not always on 12 volt systems. So a six volt battery needs to be doubled up to go to, so two of these, are doubled to go from 6 volt to 12 volt and that makes one 12 volt battery at 250 amp hours. The second ones are wired up to make basically a second battery at 250 amp hours and then they're wired up again to combine them all to 500 amp hours at 12 volts. The inverter portion of this solar system is located inside of our coach right next to the TV in the living room. So this 2000 watt pure sign inverter has three outlets across the top those outlets are hot when we're on solar only we have additional usb charging ports that are hot inside the bedroom and then one also here on the left side of the tv when we are on pure solar these are the only outlets that we have working in the house the normal wall outlets are not hot when you're not plugged into shore power um, to combat that we do have surge protectors with multiple outlets that I can plug into the inverter and charge whatever I need to off of it just to gain additional outlets. The actual power supplied by this is enough to charge multiple devices at one time. This is the charge controller portion of the solar system. This is a Zamp Solar Z ZS30AD. This is a dual battery bank controller and maybe more than most people need for their systems. I bought this as kind of a safeguard and a redundant backup to if I needed to put in a second battery bank because the first one was not large enough. Again, that kind of comes back to the unknown factors of how much electricity will we use every day in an RV? We didn't have the answers for that before, but we do now. Easiest way to find out that exact answer is right here. 73.1 amp hours that's how much charge went in today so that's how much electricity we used yesterday from the time we stopped charging the night before until this time we stopped charging yesterday afternoon to recap our solar system up on top of the roof we've got three 160 watt solar panels those combine for a total generating potential of 480 watts our battery bank is comprised of four 250 amp hour, six volt, full river AGM batteries. Our solar charge controller is the ZAMP ZS30AD dual bank charge controller. And our inverter is the ZAMP 2000 watt pure sign inverter. Living in an RV is something that Brandon and I have dreamt about for years. When we decided to leave Hawaii, we knew the time was now. What better time? We'd already downsized. We were selling everything in order to move back to the mainland. We only took what we could fit in suitcases, so what better time to move into an RV? One of my very favorite things about this whole process is that the trailer, our truck, the solar system, we bought all of this stuff sight unseen. We'd never stepped foot in this trailer prior to actually owning it. We'd never seen the solar system prior to actually owning it and having it installed on the RV. We just bought this everything in the last couple of months and moved into it. So with that, I will say, if you have the ambition to do this and you want to move into either a tiny home or an RV and travel, simplify your life, it is absolutely doable. Well, it's time to go to the beach. If you found this video helpful, please like it and subscribe to our channel for future videos. We'll see you next time. Baby, you waited.